Hey everyone, I'm Tim, a Python engineer for Quix's SDK called Quickstreams. If you've ended up here, you're probably a Kafka user or aware enough of Kafka that you've managed to stumble across Quickstreams and or streaming data frames and you're wondering what it's all about. Well, I'm here to give you a quick rundown. We'll talk about what Quickstreams and its streaming data frames are and how it all can make your Kafka life so much simpler. So Quickstreams is a Python-based Kafka client library focused on making complex Kafka operations or really general streaming challenges like state management, windowing, aggregations, and exactly once processing easier to accomplish, much like the Java equivalent called Kafka Streams. Now, unlike Kafka Streams, which can be fairly daunting to adopt due to it being an intricate DSL, Quickstreams is modeled after the ubiquitous and well-loved Pandas library. As such, we call our Kafka inter interface a streaming data frame, and it's the heart and soul of the Quickstreams library, really. With streaming data frames, anyone familiar with the Pandas library will quickly feel at home using them, which significantly lowers the barrier to entry to not only getting started with streaming, but doing advanced operations as well, which quickly show up. Ultimately, streaming data frames help minimize some of the larger friction points for entering the streaming world by giving users a familiar framework to start from and ease them into the concepts, while still enabling power users already knowledgeable with Kafka and the sophisticated challenges that arise as you dive deeper into the streaming world. With that, let's take a quick peek and see what they look like in context and briefly go over how it all works. All right, so jumping right into this, uh, we're first going to go ahead and talk about what an application is because it's kind of the boilerplate to everything. And just so you guys know, what we're looking at here is actually one of our uh, tutorials that we actually have on our website. So if you're curious, I'll make sure that the link to it is actually down below so you could explore it in more detail because it covers basically how this entire application actually works. But we're just going to do a high level overview of just general application functionality and what it does. So starting from here, the application is really the boilerplate, and as you can see here uh, from Quick from Quickstreams import application, that's really all you're going to need to do 99% of the time. The application is going to do most of the work for you, and it's kind of the Kafka level configuration. So it's where you configure the consumer. It's also how you're going to establish your topics. So here we're uh, establishing the input and output topic, and you'll see that later, uh, and. and the data frame layer is more the data manipulation layer, which we're, we will go ahead and jump to now. So down here, as you can see, it's also uh, the data frame is also initiated with the uh, app. So app.dataframe. So once we've established that, we can then just continue to manipulate and add operations to it. So along that line, this is kind of where the first major split between what a traditional data frame that you might think and what our streaming data frame is. So when we're defining our streaming data frame, we are not operating on data right now. We're actually writing a pipeline. And when we eventually run the application with app.run, this is when data is going to come in and the data frame is going to read from this topic here. It's going to read records uh, one by one and then process it with... Uh, process it at each step that we define here. And in case you're curious, in this case, where uh, this is the structure of our data over here, so you can see our Kafka value, and you can see that it's JSON-like. And that's uh, pretty important to point out. You don't have to use JSON data with this, but a lot of the features and functionality uh, for the streaming data frame were built from the ground up with the assumption that you're kind of dealing with columnar or JSON or basically a Python dictionary like format, right? Because it, data frames, you have columns, which is, you know, very similar to a dictionary in a lot of respects. And we've operated on that assumption here. So it goes kind of hand in hand here with the uh, JSON data. So I'm not going to go into a lot of details about what each function is doing here, but at, at a very surface glance, uh, if you're familiar at all with data frames, this is going to look really famil familiar, right? So we have basically here, we're just filtering some purchases and we want to make sure that those purchases total to more than $100 and we want to make sure that our membership type is silver or gold rather than like a bronze membership. So we're doing some typical data frame filtering and the structure probably looks similar to that. Here we're adding a column based on some uh, generic apply function. So this is where you can plug in pretty much any function that you want uh, and it gives you the freedom to do a lot of things. And here you're doing a very traditional column selection. 
And this basically then filters that final record to then eventually be output to a topic. So overall, as you can see, it's uh, it, it feels very familiar and it should. It's in, intentional that it feels like a data frame. Now, of course, there's going to be some distinctions later on as you get to some of the more intricate and complicated Kafka specific features, but that's something that you can investigate later. We have tons of videos about all the different features that we've included, and a lot of them are very, very powerful and can make for some really awesome uh, one-liners. Uh, kind of to that point, one nice thing about this being a pipeline uh, is you can actually combo things together. So for example, I could add like a print uh, function that we have built in here. Um, we also have like an update function. So you can actually chain that all together on one line and it will work uh, exactly as you would expect it to. So that's another cool thing about this. So that's all I really have for you today. Hopefully this is enough to whet your appetite and really pique your interest and want to follow up and learn more. Um, and if you uh, end up exploring and you get stuck, definitely check out our Slack channel. We are always uh, helping new users out and they always have all kinds of cool questions. So we really encourage you to come out there and uh, come say hi. So. Thank you so much for checking us out and hopefully I'll see you in another video.